Hey guys, welcome back to Man Time and Happy New Year. So I'm starting my new year off with uh, another stubborn hydraulic cylinder. Um, the uh, the cylinder on the on the backhoe here, the tube was completely gone, uh, severe galling um, all the way through the tube. So I went ahead and found another tube. Uh, very few of them left in the U.S. I guess I called uh, a number of places had the tractor store. Um, Ford New Holland place looking all over for them and uh, I think you can buy a new one for about $2,200 somewhere in there uh, so I wasn't going to pay that. I also had to have the old tube cut off of there. Um, they've got that pin available for about $250 um, but I'm not going to pay that either so I'll make my own pin. Uh, I ordered some 4140 material to uh, to make that pin and uh, the, the tube that I found, um, the company that has this uh, this tractor um, salvage yard said that uh, that the tube uh, got my hopes up you know the tube we got a good tube we'll test it we'll send it to you uh, they tested it they had another one tested that one uh, both of them weren't going to pass um, the test of, uh, of pressurization this one has a, a bent shaft but the the shaft actually looks pretty pretty decent um, they had to cut out the pin I'm assuming on here they've still got the pin stuck in the other side here but uh, what I'm going to do here is take you through how to uh, twist that gland off of there on the bench and uh, I'll bring you in a little closer here show you what I'm going to try out um, doing it on the bench if this doesn't work I'm gonna have to put it back on the uh, on the backhoe with a pin so it's gonna be the episode for today stick around and welcome to man all right so here's what I've come up with uh, to, uh, to get this gland off of here, similar to what I did on the backhoe with welding. Um, a piece out the side of it. This, this, is, uh, this is pretty similar, but without the damage to the gland um, from that welding. So I've got this pin here, and I've rounded off the top of it, and I've kind of cut a groove in there so it fits uh, up in that hole. And then uh, I welded on a chunk of um, half inch or... Uh, or 5 8 sucker rod here and then I'm gonna use my uh, my punch to uh, to come in from the other side and hopefully this dual action process of the pressure here on the gland the pressure here on the gland is gonna um, help that gland come off of there. I already tried the big pipe wrench uh, of course that didn't work um, tried the uh, tried the spanner wrench and that uh, that twisted and and got messed up again and so um, I, I don't know why I'm trying to reinvent the wheel here I already found kind of the secret sauce and getting these stuck glands off of there so uh, let's put on some gloves and some safety glasses and uh, and try to get this thing off of there
Well, here's the situation. This cylinder is bent uh, really bad. And uh, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know why it was extended and coming through UPS extended like that. I don't know if it bent at UPS or um, bent, you know, before it was shipped out. But this gland is super stuck on there. It shouldn't be that hard to, to twist that off now that I've actually got it broke free. So uh, I've got the hydraulics from the backhoe hooked up to the cylinder. I'm going to start it up and I'm going to extend uh, the cylinder and see what happens. Oh God.
Okay, so you saw there um, what happened was, you know, taking that cylinder apart on the bench, uh, extremely difficult. It, I would recommend taking the cylinder apart while half of it's still connected to the backhoe, the backhoe uh, or your tractor or whatever it is. That gives it a stable spot to, uh, to loosen and, and disconnect everything besides putting it in the bench vise. Uh, of course, you saw there, I actually had to go out and buy a three-quarter inch impact gun and uh, I can't remember if it was there or with a big wrench and pry bar on uh, on that nut for the rod or for the piston nut um, the the bench vise just broke in half at the at the base of it and broke and fell off the bench so and the and the rod and, the, and stuff with it uh, just crazy crazy but um, off camera here, I went through and, uh, and straightened the rods for, for the pistons, so I've got one spare. Um, I, I took the better of the two with less kind of damage to the uh, chrome, and, uh, but both of them are straight now. Got one, uh, as you saw, they're fully reassembled. Um, I don't know how much of that I, I got on film, but uh, so I've got a repacked cylinder, fully assembled. Um, got a <laughs> new bench vise on the, on the bench, and then... Uh, since I had to cut that old cylinder off of the off of the tractor here, I went ahead and made a a, a new pin for it. So um, just took some dimensions diameters off of the old one, and uh, and then measured off of the other side and between the ears uh, on this uh, on this bracket right here. Matter of fact, measured those and then measured the uh, the length of the or the width of the washers uh, to get that that distance and that center line, and of course the diameter. So. Um, this, this cost me only uh, about fifty dollars shipped in, in material, forty-one forty, and uh, and with the lathe, um, a, a steady rest and a, and a um, live center was was pretty easy to make that. And uh, you can see there, it's just it's a really nice, snug and uh, and perfect fit. Uh, matter of fact, I mean very very little. Um, very little clearance inside of there, so that's per that's perfect. That's good. Um, so we're going to install this new cylinder today and hopefully bring this project to a close. Um, it's been a long couple weeks trying to work on this thing, and, and uh, you know, a little word of advice, I guess, if you've got something like this that's an old piece of equipment, and uh, you know, before you get into it, um, plan on worst case scenario. Uh, what happens if? Um, you know, and in this case, it was what happens if I actually need a new cylinder. And <clears throat> I, I had uh, I had just kind of thought, you know, Ford 555, such a long running span, um, the, these parts would still be available. That wasn't the case. Um, had to search high and low across the country for a replacement cylinder. Um, a, uh, I think I could have bought a new one from New Holland for about $2,200. Uh, really didn't want to go that route again. This was a $3,500 machine delivered. Um, of course, I had to put a short block in it, so it's probably closer to a, you know, all in all a $10,000 machine now. But uh, to put a $2,200 cylinder on it um, just didn't make sense to me. So uh, with the with the inside of this tube of the of the cylinder completely scored, I I really had no other option. Um, so I found a used one that needed to be rebuilt, um, no guarantees, and uh, of course the rod was bent. So that was the process, but uh, yeah, note to self, um, prepare for the worst and uh, hope for the best. same on this opposite side we got a washer and a snap ring and uh, one thing I found for these snap rings is uh, these snap ring pliers actually work pretty
All right, so I've got the uh, I've got the outrigger put back together. I was working on it last night and just ran out of daylight. So here we are. Uh, the next day, just got off work, and uh, I wanted to uh, go ahead and fire it up and, and then exercise that cylinder, button up just a few things, and then put it uh, put it back to where it goes under its uh, carport over there. But the uh, the value that that's going to bring by having those outriggers where I set them down and it's not leaking down, and I don't have a tire that hits the ground, and all of a sudden I'm bouncing around. Uh, it, it's priceless, really. But uh, but what I can tell you is is the cost of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the the cost of it is is twofold, right? There was a there was a price in the materials, and the things that I had to do, and then there was also a price of the amount of downtime. And if you're going to um, do something like this, there's there's two options, right? You can take the cheap route, like I took, which is basically um, to uh, to repack and rebuild and find a used cylinder and then rebuild and and all that stuff and then there's the other route which is more costly which is buying a new cylinder um taking the cylinder off there and then and then having a new cylinder buying a new pin you know of course i had to make the the pin here um but but what did i save doing that i didn't save time that's for sure but i saved money um so a new cylinder versus the used cylinder uh twenty two hundred dollars versus six hundred and fifty dollars um, a new pin versus an old pin, uh, new pin $250, material for the pin, uh, and machine in the pin um, $50, plus the uh, couple hours that it took to machine it down. So the downside of that uh, low cost option is the downtime for the machine. The machine's been sitting here for probably upwards of three weeks. And in that amount of time, I got no use out of the machine. So if you're making money using your equipment like this, um, it may have been easier to spend the um, $2,500, uh, $2,200 plus the um, $250 for the pin and, uh, and then get it back in service right away. So some decisions you have to make. Let's go ahead and start the uh, backhoe up and then we'll see what happens to that cylinder. Um, the very first startup, it's going to be full of air, um, so we're going to we're going to rock that outrigger lever back and forth and press that air out of there, and then once that air is out of there, it should go to operating like normal. So uh, let's let's do it. Let's. Uh... gang there we have it uh, the project is complete the backhoe is ready to go back into service uh, I've got no leaking down from this cylinder um, it's holding really well and it looks like everything that I did there um, ha has worked out so if you're thinking about working on your backhoe cylinders or loader cylinders or whatever type of cylinders I hope this video helps you out so um, check out some of my other videos where I'm actually using the equipment and uh, give me a like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Thanks for joining me today on Man Time, guys. Get out there. Have you some man time, too.